Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman here, bringing you weather without all that social media hype here on your Wednesday, January 15th, 2025. Let's take a look at what we're tracking here for today as another Arctic invasion is coming our way. We'll give you an update and the latest information on that. And another southern winter storm? Question mark. It really got everybody kind of excited yesterday afternoon. We'll take a look at the latest model data on that. And we'll also give you an update on the Southern California weather to see if they've got any relief coming their way. It doesn't look too great from a wind perspective for today, that's for sure. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite imagery here as we're looking at pretty quiet here along the East Coast. Got a little bit of rain out here uh, around Texas. I'm going to show you down here that we kind of tracking along the Gulf Coast for today. And a little uh, splurge some cold air coming down across the Great Lakes. I'll uh, fire up a few more of the lake effect snows, but really pretty quiet for most of the nation. Got this big old ridge out here in the west, obviously, and uh, no relief for Southern California as long as this ridge continues to stay in place. Looking at what's going on here on our watches and warnings, again, dry red flag warnings here across Southern California. High winds up to 70 miles per hour possible today. Wish you had some better news there, but it's still looking very bad in that location. And again, some uh, lake effect snows up along the Great Lakes there up toward New York. Here's our current surface map here for this morning. Again, some light rain down here along the Gulf Coast. There's some snows up in the high plains. It's very, very frigid and cold. Minus two in Chicago right now. That's a big yuck there. There's a minus 13 up there as well. So this cold air is going to stay in place. We're going to get a slight reprieve for a few days for a lot of areas here across uh, the eastern third of the country going into Friday. But then the big bottom drops out heading into this upcoming uh, next week. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of this rain down here along the Gulf Coast. We get some of this rains down for Houston for their morning rush hour there uh, down toward Galveston Bay. Again, just uh, just plain old rain, no thunderstorms with this. Uh, but this will continue to track along the Gulf Coast here over the next few days. Let's go ahead and take a look at the list from the Storms Prediction Center, see what they've got going on here for the next three days or so. And right now, not seeing anything as far as a potential thunderstorm development here over the next several days. Let me get this on the correct map here for you there. There you go. As it's looking, uh, no thunderstorms there for day one, neither for day two. It's also quiet there. The day we're going to get this in is going to go in toward Friday with that next uh, storm system coming along. we got a thunderstorm risk returning by day three. As you can see there along Louisiana, Mississippi, Gulf Coast there, uh, looking at a potential for some uh, thunderstorms there. Again, nothing organized, nothing severe at this time, uh, but that'll spread through the southeast as we go into this upcoming weekend. So let's go ahead and talk about the heavy rain threat. That's really non-existent as well. We're not expecting any heavy rain or flooding issues for the next three days. And the big story is going to continue to be the cold air plunge expected here in the three to seven day hazard outlook. This will be updated here later today here. But again, big bulk of the country going to be dealing with abnormally cold Arctic air as we head into uh, early next week. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the high resolution model data. We'll look at the short term model data. We're looking at the high res here for the next 40 hours. And we're going to be looking at this rain down here along the Gulf Coast. This will kind of be tracking this way. Got another system here coming across the Great Lakes as well. But a lot of the country pretty quiet here on your Wednesday. So as we go ahead and track on through this again, as we'll see that rain there right along the Gulf Coast, see that rains there through Louisiana. So a little bit of rain here coming in to, or uh, overnight tonight along the Gulf Coast. Here is our kind of our reinforcing shot of cold air along the Great Lakes. That'll kind of uh, pick up the lake effect snows into that zone as we go into your day on your Thursday. So it kind of moves on along. And as we go into Thursday morning, we get a few showers down here into Florida, a little few uh, showers down there as we head in through Thursday morning. And you see the snows here picking up across the Midwest with that little quick moving system there coming into Pennsylvania as well as we go into uh, later in the day on Thursday. Wish we had some of this getting into Southern California, but unfortunately, that's not going to happen. It's going to stay too far away, not going to help out the fire fighting efforts there. All right, so as we go on through the rest of this run here, again, as we go in through the end of the day, Thursday night, uh, plain old quiet here. We're going to see some of this moisture feed kind of uh, feed up into it, into Texas here as we're going to watch that next uh, uh, storm system develop. It's going to bring uh, rain across the south, and we're going to watch the bottom drop out as we go through uh, this upcoming weekend. All right, let's go ahead and look at that jet stream again. We're going to watch that river of air that drives our weather conditions across the country here. As we go through Wednesday, staying pretty quiet here for the most part. And then we're going to see that disturbance kind of kick on out. So we got a couple things happening. you got a jet stream that's charging down here and it got the subtropical jet. They're going to tag, tag team up. We're going to develop a storm system in here. Uh, they'll look overly strong, but it's going to be bringing some rain here across the middle of the country as we head towards your Friday. And as it does so, boy, it's going to really be driving down this very, very cold, bitterly air here coming in uh, into your Saturday and Sunday. So we'll have some rain here across the east uh, as that comes into your Saturday and that pushes on through. And then the Arctic air is going to fall in right behind it 
as we go in towards your Sunday. Then as we go into early next week, uh, one of the things that we've been talking about here for a couple of runs, yesterday wasn't showing it. Now it's kind of showing again where we're going to have a little bit of an a, of a, of a outbreak of maybe some snows here along this, this very sharp boundary that's going to be in here uh, with that Arctic air settling into place and maybe riding some snows here across the deep south. The, right yesterday at the, the afternoon run, it was going really crazy with it. It's backed off for today and both the American GB, GFS and the European model are both showing this. So this will continue on on. But one thing's for sure, this jet stream just stays right in place. Very, very cold air all next week uh, staying in place there. There's a, a little disturbance here uh, toward the middle of or toward the Friday that may kick off some more snows here across the middle of the country. We'll show you that here in just a second. Uh, but just plain old cold. It really just stays in place here all across a big chunk of the country uh, as we go through the rest of this model run. You see, just continue that tap of cold air just continuing to funnel right into the United States. And that's going to continue right in through the end of the month. So I wish I had some changes there, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like. We may get a weak disturbance still showing up there, maybe bringing some rain here on the tail end of this model run as we head toward the end of the month. So let's go ahead and look at that precipitation breakdown right now. As we'll see, again, we got that little disturbance sliding up through the, the Great Lakes and into the Northeast, bringing in a little bit of snows there uh, going into your Friday morning. But most of the country pretty quiet until we get that storm system to develop going Friday into Saturday. So we get that energy coming out of the uh, coming out of the Pacific and coming into the plain. So we get some rains here firing up. Again, we're going to remember we're going to charge this cold air right behind this as we go through the weekend. So this is going into your Saturday, the 18th. And this will continue on through and move off toward the east. And then uh, you'll see that cold air kind of slowly funneling in behind it. You see that freezing line, that 540 line, really diving down here deep across the back, back part of this. Firing off some snows here across portions of uh, heading into Tennessee uh, as we go into Sunday morning. So this moves on through, through there and clears on out and just plain old cold. Then we're going to watch what happens going into Monday and Tuesday. we got a little bit of energy here diving down here to the south. It's going to swing on through here and kind of bumping into that milder air to the south along the subtropical jet. And as it does so, it's going to fire off some uh, uh, snow and freezing rain through Texas and Louisiana. So this was much more robust yesterday. It has backed off, thankfully, because what was showing yesterday afternoon was something that would have been a historic uh, a storm of a really a bad nature. But this is bad enough. Uh, historic in the sense that you don't usually get freezing rain down toward the Gulf Coast. And that's what we're seeing down toward Houston and going out across Louisiana and a lot of Louisiana and then right along the Gulf Coast into like areas of Mobile, inland areas away from Pensacola, snow across uh, very far deep south here going into your two, late, two, uh, late in your day on Tuesday uh, here showing up here across uh, South Alabama, South Georgia. Those are areas that do, definitely do not see snow, uh, that's for sure. And this moves on off quickly, thank goodness. And hopefully it stays on the weak side as it's currently being advertised. And then as we go on through next week, we got another little disturbance kicking on out here. This will be going in toward your Friday. As we go toward Friday, you're going to get a little cutoff low there coming on off with some more snow across Texas. And that'll track off toward the north and east. And it moves up toward the north. So you see there coming through uh, Arkansas as we go into Friday night. And then this swings on up into the Ohio River Valley there. And it looks like we get a little bit of a reprieve from the cold air as we head toward Friday. It kind of warms up here. As you see, the freezing line now has shifted up toward the north here, at least across the south. They get a little bit of a break from the cold air uh, going into the following weekend. And then uh, we'll see another shot come on down here again. Boom, here it comes. Uh, it looks like, again, a lot of the country going to stay on the cold side here, even getting into Southern California. Here goes that rains across Southern California, a little disturbance sliding down the coastline there. Interior, uh, uh, interior snows and some rains along the coast. Again, that's what we were tracking yesterday. It was showing about the 28th and 29th, so that's still there. So again, we're looking at model trends. We're looking this far out. We'll see if that continues to be the case. That would be some needed rains there. It's not a lot, but it's better than nothing because that's what they've been getting out there, a whole lot of nothing out there. Uh, here in the next uh, seven to ten days. Nothing going to be out there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the precipitation total totals here for the next uh, three days first. We'll take you through the next 72 hours as we'll kind of see what's going on here. Not that much, really. you got some Great Lakes uh, snows up here, a little bit out here in the west, and we're starting to see the rains here increase across the Texas Gulf Coast. As we go into the weekend, the southeast will get some more rains. Uh, that's for sure. We'll go ahead and pick it on up here uh, going through the weekend as that front moves on through. And it uh, looks like we take this all out to 240 here. We'll take this out to 10 days, or I like to stop it right there. Uh, we see uh, next 10 days, some very good rains here across the, the deep south. Looks like the lake effect snows stay up pretty good. 
and some intermountain snows out here. But again, Southern California, not a lot showing here for the next 10 days. That don't that doesn't show up there until we go beyond the 10 days. So I go all the way out beyond the 10 days. There you see a little bit of rain here across Southern California. Not as much as what was showing yesterday, but again, that's the only thing we got. Only game in town for Southern California with the rain totals. So let's talk about the snow totals here. Let's look at this as we're going to go out for the next 10 days. We're going to watch the first initial storm here uh, coming in for this upcoming week, going into Monday and Tuesday. That's that southern snowstorm here, okay? So we got, uh, obviously, we got the, the cold air come rushing in here. We're going to see the, the lake effect snows, a little ore graphic lifting there across the mountains as that cold air rushes in. But it's going to be Monday and Tuesday. Here comes the southern snow, boom, here it goes right around Texas and into Louisiana and into South Georgia. So this is an area that does not see snow. Very historic. It's been years since they've seen anything like that uh, in that part of the country. You've seen the intermountain snows out here in the west uh, taking place as well. And it looks like we're in store for uh, just some plain old cold weather there. And then we got that other system that'll bring some snows. That'll track in behind the system. You see this one uh, as we head out toward 240. So this is this, this snow event here coming in behind it. So we got two. We got a track across the deep south there. Uh, as we go into uh, heading into late next week. So let's talk about the Southeast snow totals real quick. I'll just look at the Southeast totals here real quick. Again, not a big deal here. Looks like a little swath of maybe two to four inches of rain, of rain, of snow, I should say, here across South Georgia, South Alabama, and back toward Louisiana. Again, something that doesn't happen very often, uh, but uh, something to watch here closely as we go to next week. Hopefully it doesn't do a flip-flop and turn into a major, major event as it was showing yesterday. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the temperature anomaly. This is not going to change that much. What's interesting about this? We've got a couple of little brief warm-ups in here for the most part, but uh, the overall pattern stays, you know, stays very much on the on the chilly side. So as you notice, we head toward Thursday and Friday. We got a lot of the country here uh, showing a lot of red here. So we get a little bit of a brief here across the middle of the country, a little cool out here in the west. So, but uh, it's temporary. Obviously, we got that big dive coming in, heading toward next week. And so here it comes. Uh, boom, really kind of making its presence felt here as we head toward Monday. Look how much of the country here Monday morning. That deep purple is 30 degrees below normal here in these purple zones uh, going in toward your Monday on January the 20th. And that'll continue right into Tuesday as well. Going into Tuesday morning, you see it now sitting across the Ohio River Valley. We're sitting very cold here as well. A lot of the west here below normal as well. So very cold temperatures in toward next week. And then as we head toward that weekend, we do get a little bit of a reprieve, just a little bit. You see a little bit coming at us a little bit here, a little bit across the northern tier, especially going into Friday. Still kind of below normal here across the southeast, across the west, but uh, not quite as bitterly cold there across the high plains uh, as we head toward the 24th. But the trend is once we go further out here again, is we got another shot coming in here in the big part of the country. Look at that 29th here. I mean, really just about the entire country here looking at below normal temperatures, especially out here in the west uh, as we head toward the 29th of January. And that pretty much just stays in place as we finish up the month. So we got a couple of small brief warm-ups in there. But the overall trend for the entire country as we finish up the month of January is really for below normal temperatures to remain in place. So let's go ahead and talk about the climate outlook here. We'll look at the latest on this as we're looking at the, the January 20th through the 24th. This lines up pretty well with what we're seeing on the European model there with below normal temperatures staying in place. And that continues from the 22nd to the 28th and probably heading out to the 29th and 30th, the way it's looking right now. Just a slight little above normal out here in the west. I don't even know if that's going to stay there once the, once it gets updated here later today. Looking at your precipitation, this definitely stays in place here with the below normal precipitation here from the 20th to the 24th, just along the Gulf Coast. Are they expecting any precipitation? It's been a very dry January, which is very unusual. Usually we get a progression of storm systems from west to east. We're just not seeing it with the pattern where it's all continental air mass coming in here out of Canada. It does pick up with more precipitation here, at least on the outlook from the 22nd to the 28th. We got a couple of those storm systems coming in uh, beyond uh, day 8, 9, and 10. That was bringing the precipitation across the middle of the country. Still staying dry out in Southern California. Nothing out there to kind of help out with those fires out there. But today is going to be another concern because of the windy conditions out in the west. Uh, that's going to continue to be a problem. And then, of course, we're going to have to watch this cold air and this uh, potential historic uh, winter storm for the south, uh, especially going into next week. Uh, yesterday was completely the 12 C GFS and the European both were, were firing up some very heavy precipitation, like a major icing and freezing storm event. Now it's just looking like a, a, a snow and freezing rain event along the Gulf Coast, which is something very unusual, uh, very historic in nature, because it's been years since they've had anything like that down there. 
and uh, looks like we're in store for just plenty of brutally cold air for next week for a big part of the country. So hopefully things will begin to warm up as we get ready to flip the calendar here in a couple weeks going to February. Maybe February won't be as cold as January. January is going to go down as one of the colder Januarys we've had probably in the last 20 years, the way it's looking right now. January is definitely going to be a cold one for at least the continental United States is concerned. All right, that's your weather update for now, you guys. If you haven't yet decided to subscribe to the channel, please do so at this time. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, please leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you like to see. I do appreciate y'all's feedback. All right, that's your weather update for now. You guys take it easy. Be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.